Hello guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can make an attractive graphical abstract for your manuscript. First of all, I'm just going to make a new slide and let's say we start from here. And first of all, the simple and easy way is that you make one diagram and then you redo that diagram again and again. For example, I'm going to start with the very first phase, which is this one. Or for just for reference, I'm going to copy the image that I'm going to draw and I'm going to paste it here for a reference. So for example, as you can see that we need to make these pillars first. So for that, we need a cube shape like this. And then in order to uh, reform that shape, you can see that once I click this yellow button, it is going to increase and decrease in size. So first of all, we are going to stretch it like this and then we are going to decrease the height. And then you can also decrease the height from here and make it a cube shape okay so once you're done with this one you can increase it and decrease the thickness so as you see that when I decrease the thickness it increases in length so I'm going to reduce it from here so the base is a little bit bigger in height so we are going to do like this and once you are done with this one copy this shape and paste again once you are done with copying and pasting you can paste it on top of it and then the thing that you are going to do is that you're going to reduce the thickness for this one once you are re reducing the thickness, you can reduce the size from here and then make sure that it stacks up on the top of it. So now what we are going to do is that change the color for the top one. So first of all, go here, shape fill, let's give him this color. And for the shape outline, let's just use black outline for both of them. And then once we are done with this one, we can change the shape outline for the bottom and just make it a bit lighter color, which is light gray. Once you're done with this one, what you can do is go to insert menu shapes and then take a cylinder take a cylinder and paste it here and similarly you can place it over here now click on this shape and then go to home format painter once you are done with this one click on the cylinder and you can have a cylinder shape now there are two ways to make it send it back so right click and you can just click send back and you can see that it is in the back side of this shape now, once you're done with this one, you can see and you can reduce the size, also de de increase or decrease the thickness. Now, this is one shape which is done right now. Now, we need four of these shapes and one shape like this, but it has a bigger chunk or bigger layer of coating on top of it. So, it's just actually a two-step coating process, uh, which uh, they have explained in this graphical abstract. So, what you can do is now try to make it in the center something like this now I'm going to copy this one and I'm going to replace it at the bottom like this so once you're done with this one copy this one paste it here similarly copy this one and paste it here and for the last one as you can see here I just need the top part so I'm going to copy this one and paste it here and then just remove this one and copy this one and paste it again here because it has a bigger uh, it has a more thickness and then you can place it over here Okay, it looks like it's a little bit out of alignment, but we can reduce and increase the size based on our requirements. So just drag a little bit down here and similarly, you are going to place this and drag it down here because we have two uh, diagrams, two, two objects here. Once you are done with this one, now we are going to work on the arrows. So how are you going to place these arrows? Go to the insert menu, click on shapes and then click on this arrow. So you can find these options in the black block arrows and you can just choose this arrow like this. So normally what you can do is that you can add an outline to this one to make it more prominent or you can just add a black color to this one and then increase or adjust the size for this one. And if you think it's too dark, you can reduce the color for that one. You can choose lighter black color so that they can be more prominent or it should be not too eye pinching. So normally if you choose two uh, bright colors, it's not too good. So it's better that if you use a bit lighter tone of that black color. So now I'm just increasing the height of this uh, cylinders so that they are equal. And once you increase, you can see that there's a line which shows that they are equal in size. Now I'm going to copy this one and drag it to the next part. So once you have one sample image, you can just click both of them and send it to the background. Now the thing that I do is that I make one generic image and then I replace them. So now we can see that this part is done and these layers have additional layers on top of it. So what we can do is copy this one or just control and shift and drag it up towards a little bit. So one way is that you can just copy and paste or another way is just control shift and drag it up. 
so here we need three layers so we are going to add two more so control shift and drag i'm going to change the layer color so that they are look they look different because it's all about coatings so once one layer is added and then there's another layer on top of it now you can also adjust the alignment for these layers because when you copy they are not too aligned so you can just uh, manually adjust these uh, alignments so once you're done you can copy the top layer for your second layer at the bottom of it and then similarly you can copy this one and here i'm going to show you one trick so once you copy this one don't paste it as an object rather paste it as an image so the reason why is that once you place it as an image it is easy for you to adjust the size but once you use it as an object it's difficult while dealing with this cube so now we are going to add a cylinder to this one and i'm going to add a little bit more thickness more width to this cylinder so that it looks like that this coating is inside that cylinder and now you can see that i can easily adjust the size of this picture but if i had an object it would have been difficult for me now the main thing to learn here is how to add a transparency and how to add the color now simple way is that copy this one and first of all give it as a transparent white background once you are done with this one copy this shape again and then paste this on, on top of it okay uh, sorry that was a mistake so copy this shape uh, again and then paste it and then place it on top of it now the thing that you are going to do is that you are going to add a color to this shape so just drag this shape a little bit down and then add a color to this shape cylinder now i'm going to add a dark color so once you are done we're going to send it to the back so that our coating layer can come on the top now either ways choose light color or you can just go and click here and go to the fill options and you can just reduce the transparency so it both ways are same if you reduce its transparency or if you ch choose a lighter color both ways will have and help you to do the same thing that is intended which is to show that this is immersed in the water inside now you can see that there's a difference between the curve so you can just click on this golden button and you can increase and decrease the thickness Similarly, you can reduce this a little bit more and make sure that it doesn't look too big or they are equal in size and ratios in comparison to those images. Now, the next task is to change the color for the top layer, which is a little bit darker color and then changing the color for this layer a little bit darker and then we are all done. So this was the basic part and the most important part. So after that, we can make this figure more good by adding text to this one. So now we are going to add another arrow so we are going to see which arrow or connector lines we can show a radiation or you can show that there's some heat going to this coating layer or something like that so you can just simply use simple arrows and then increase a little bit width so that it looks more prominent once you're done with this one copy this and paste it again copy and paste it again so you have three of them now group them once you group them, it is easier for you to rotate them and to move from one place to another. But if you don't group them, it's difficult for you to manage that. So now copy that, control shift and drag it to the other part wherever you need. Now, yes, you can see that this is a little bit uh, more lower. I'm going to increase the height for this part and make it a bit higher. Similarly, copy this one and paste it on top of the second one. Now. I'm going to increase the space between uh, the top and the uh, bottom layer so that they have enough space and they don't look too congested. Now I'm going to go in the block arrow sections and I'm going to take a long uh, arrow and I'm going to place it in the middle which is going to show the two step coating. So this uh, arrow is sh showing the direction in which direction it is being proceeded. So what you can do is now just make it in the middle so that they have equal space from top to bottom and now it's time is to change the gradient color. You can see that the gradient type which I'm using is linear and the direction has no angle which is from the left hand side and the color you can easily displace from the left right to increase and decrease the gradient on either side of the arrow. Another way is that if you don't want an arrow or solid line to the arrow you can just remove it. The most important part while you are making a diagram is to make a diagram more good but the thing that makes it more beautiful is the text that you are going to add in it as a supporting text so that it looks and it is self-explanatory without the reader to read the text that you have added in the abstract so the graphical abstract serves two purposes that it gives a summary of your whole manuscript in a sim simple image so the more powerful the image is the more easier for the reviewer or the reader is to understand what you are actually doing or what you actually did in your paper so now I just added a drop in from the icon menu and I'm going to add a different color depending upon the film in the next 
uh, next uh, part so I uh, just for an example I'm just going to show you how you can do it so I'm just going to add a simple text let me zoom in a little bit so that you can see it better I'm going to add some text and then I'm going to show it how it looks like later I'm going to replace it with the diagram that I made just to save time for you guys so in Microsoft Word you have a subscript option but here in Microsoft PowerPoint you need to go inside the toolbox to do that you can also customize the ribbon for Microsoft PowerPoint toolbar but it's easier for you to go like this then it doesn't matter so just right now I'm just adjusting and to show how I added the text in the figure and how you can add a text in the figure so similarly I'm just going to uh, format that color so that this color can look more uh, less brighter and can give a better look now the text part is done I'm just going to save time I'm going to make another slide and copy the slide that I already made so that it can be uh, easier for you to understand how you can add a text the text that I already added is not a big deal so I just showed you one simple example all you have to do is that add these texts again and wherever it is needed so these texts are supporting text that explains what is happening in each and every image now normally when they say that your graphical abstract has to be in certain dimensions so in that case what you can do I'm going to show you that for a certain dimension that you need for a graphical abstract you can simply do one thing which is that you can choose those length and height and then just copy and you can go to the second slide here first and then uh, let's go to the insert menu and make a certain size of the shape so this is a shape size let's say this is a recommended size from the manuscript now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in this one but see that you have empty spaces on the side of it that you want to fill and make it look more beautiful so in order to do that you don't you can go here and you can increase the space between these objects so that they can cover the additional space left over in this abstract so uh, the best way is that add a small light color to the background so that it can make your main figure look more prominent either use light color I prefer normally using a light color but if you really like more bright colors you can choose whatever you want so in this way you can make your abstract more uh, attractive and you can make your abstract look more uh, beautiful in a simple and easy way Microsoft PowerPoint can help you do a lot of things in a simple way and I think that if you uh, find it hard for choosing icons or choosing objects that you don't have in Microsoft PowerPoint I'm going to leave a link in the description for the icon set you can easily use them I hope you guys like my video and if you haven't watched my previous video do watch them I'm going to leave a link in the description and if you haven't subscribed yet do subscribe and if you want me to help you make a new diagram please do let me know in the comment section till then take care Allah Hafiz